So in the previous video, we introduced CDKIs, which are proteins that inhibit CDKs, cyclin-dependent kinases. And when CDKIs are active, they will halt the cell cycle. They will halt cell cycle progression. And the way they do that is by inhibiting these cyclin-dependent kinases. Cyclin-dependent kinases are kinases that phosphorylate substrates such as RB that help push the cell through the cell cycle. So here in this video, we're going to just go through some examples of how CDKIs are regulated and how they help halt the cell cycle, how they can be inactivated to allow the cell cycle to progress, and how they are uh, dysregulated in human cancers. Uh, the first example we'll talk about is the CDKI P27. P27 uh, in many cells in the body uh, is at very high levels in G1. So P27 is at very high levels. It can be working to inhibit any of the CDKs, preventing movement from G1 into S phase. Well, now let's say the cell wants to go through S, uh, into S phase. We need to somehow uh, inhibit P27. So there are a number of different kinases that can phosphorylate P27. And this phosphorylation allows for P27 to now uh, interact with a E3 ubiquitin ligase uh, called SCIP2. So what is the ubiquitin ligase? The ubiquitin ligase is a protein, it's an enzyme that transfers ubiquitins to a protein. And we covered that in a previous video, ubiquitilation. So P27 becomes ubiquitilated, which sends P27 to the proteasome and P27 is subsequently destroyed. And so P27 protein levels will decrease. And if P27 protein levels decrease, what happens to CDK, uh, the CDKs? Well, they can become active, allowing the cell to um, go through the cell cycle. So one way to regulate P27 is to regulate its destruction. Keep it at high levels when you want to freeze cell in a stage in the cell cycle, destroy P27 when you want to be allowed the cell to move through the cell cycle. So here's an example of when phosphorylating P27 will uh, inhibit it by recruiting its destructor, SCIP2, which is an E3 ubiquitin ligase. So that's one way P27 levels can be regulated. Um, let's talk about lo P uh, localization of these proteins. We mentioned that for these proteins to function, they typically be, need to be in the nucleus because CDKs, cyclin-dependent kinases, are typically phosphorylating their substrates in the nucleus, substrates such as the RB retinoblastoma protein. So for P27 and P21, for example, to function, they need to be nuclear. Well, um, they can be moved into the cytoplasm via phosphorylation. So we've covered in previous videos the AKT pathway. In most human cells, the AKT pathway is stimulated uh, via uh, growth factor receptor pathways. Um, anything that feeds into the PI3 kinase AKT pathway will allow the AKT kinase to be phosphorylated and active. AKT can phosphorylate P21 and can phosphorylate P27. Well, what does phosphorylating these proteins do? When AKT phosphorylates them, that triggers their export into the cytoplasm or their retention in the cytoplasm. Either way, if these proteins are now found in the cytoplasm, they are not able to interact with CDKs and inhibit. They're not able to inhibit CDKs. So they are functionally inactive when they are in the cytoplasm. So in human cancer cells, where the AKT pathway is commonly active, uh, CDKIs will be commonly retained in the cytoplasm, thus preventing um, them from inhibiting CDKs. So cells tend to go through the cell cycle. Why? Because CDK inhibitors are inhibited. They're retained in the cytoplasm for example, because of the AKT pathway. So that's another way to regulate levels of, or le re regulate the activity of uh, CDK's eyes by um, sending them to the location in the cell where they can no longer function. Um, the levels of CDKI transcription can be regulated. So um, 
the gene that codes for the p27 protein uh its gene is uh, called cdkn1b that is the name of the gene that gene produces the p27 protein and again what is p27 it is a cdki inhibits the, all the cdks um, transcription factors must bind the promoter of this gene to allow this gene to be transactivated, to turn on. And there's a transcription factor family called FOXO, also known as FKHR. And when this transcription factor is active, it can bind the promoter of P27 gene, called again CDKN1B, and allow the production of the protein. So when FOXO is active, P27 can be produced at the gene level. Well, we know what controls, uh, what can regulate FOXO, the AKT pathway. Again, the AKT pathway activated very commonly via growth factor receptors, also known as receptor tyrosine kinases, via PI3 kinase, um, which will lead to the phosphorylation and activation of AKT. And what does AKT do? It phosphorylates proteins, some of them, when it phosphorylates them, it inactivates them. So here, AKT will phosphorylate FOXO. FOXO is one of the substrates of AKT, which inactivates FOXO. Now, if FOXO is inactivated, then what about the P27 gene? Well, FOXO can no longer turn on the P27 gene. So P27 levels drop because FOXO is inactive, because AKT is active. So in normal cells, when they want to progress through the cell cycle, they typically activate the AKT kinase, which will then inhibit the FOXO transcription factor, which will then help decrease the levels of P27 at the transcriptional level. And again, in many human cancers, AKT pathway is always active, um, and that is leading to a decrease in P27 levels. Um, another very uh, oftenly talked about um, pathway that regulates CDK inhibitors is the P53 pathway. P53, a major tumor suppressor that is mutated in virtually all human cancers, either mutated or dysregulated in all human cancers. Um, P27 is a transcription factor that can bind the promoter of um, the gene that codes for P21. I'm not sure I got that right there, CDKN1. I think I might have left a letter off of that. Um, I'll have to go fix that later, maybe. Um, so the gene that produces the P21 protein is regulated by this transcription factor called P53. And P53 can be activated in response to cellular stress, like DNA damage, radiation, um, low oxygen levels, also known as hypoxia, low nucleotide levels. So if the cells detect that they are under, under some stress, that it would not be smart to try to go through the whole cell cycle and replicate the DNA, maybe because the DNA is damaged or there's not enough oxygen um, to produce enough ATP to power the cell through the cell cycle, or there aren't enough nucleotides, those will all activate P53. And I have a whole series of videos on P53 regulation. Uh, the P53 transcription factor will bind the promoter of the P21 gene, turning it on. So again, this is another mechanism that this help will help stop the cell cycle because P21, when it is produced and it is active and it is in the nucleus and it is stable, it will bind CDKs, preventing them from phosphorylating proteins such as RB and therefore stopping progression through the cell cycle. Um, in human cancers, CDK inhibitors um, are commonly either mutated or dysregulated. So what do you think CDKIs are? Are they oncogenes or are they tumor suppressor genes? Mm. So they're going to be tumor suppressor genes because two of CDKIs stop the cell through the cell, progressing through the cell cycle if when they are present and when they are active. In most human cancers, CDKIs are not present or not active for a variety of reasons. But either way, if CDKIs are not present or not active, that allows the cell to keep going through the cell cycle unabated, right? If CDKIs were present, they could stop the cell from going through the cell cycle. But we, as we know, in human cancer cells, their checks and balances 
are all out of whack. So these are really the checks. CDKIs can stop the cell through the cell cycle, going through the cell cycle. But CDKIs are not working in many human cancers. Why aren't they working? So we can think about it. Well, in some human cancers, they're deleted. So you can have mutations within the CDK inhibitor genes. Actually, that's not very common. What's more common are the pathways that regulate CDK inhibitors. They're mutated. So mutations in P53, mutations in the AKT pathway, um, all of those could lead to P CDK inhibitors either not being produced at the gene level, um, being destroyed at the post-translational level, being inactive by being moved into the cytoplasm. So in many human cancers, uh, they could produce CDKI, uh, CDKI proteins just fine, but they don't. Or if they're produced, they're destroyed. Or if they're produced, they're in the cytoplasm. So um, CDKIs um, are important regulators of the cell cycle and are often dysregulated in human cancers. So this was not an exhaustive um, list of all the ways that CDKIs are regulated, but they are some of the ways that CDKIs can be regulated.